Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening process. And today I'm gonna to share with you three things that will actually work to help you a lot with your dark night of the soul if you so happen to find yourself in one. If you are new to my channel, the way I, I, I personally relate with the idea of the dark night of the soul, it's that it's not just one most of you know by now it's not one night, so I don't need to say that, but it's, it's not just one thing you go through. It's like this state, inevitable stage of the awakening you must pass through. It's just a series of symptoms associated with doing a, a, a lot, a fast-paced, deep amount of inner work. It's just sort of the experience of it, and it's so positive and beneficial, but the experience of it can be kind of crummy, and when you're in it, it can be very easy to disconnect from any sense of hope or optimism. And it's easy to forget that this is happening for a reason. You chose to experience this for the greater good of you and your life. It's going to improve your life in a profound way. But due to the nature of it, it can it, we can kind of lose sight of that. So I know what it's like to be in this dark night. I've been through it many times. I've helped coach people through it. And today I'm gonna to share with you three things that will make a big difference if you find yourself feeling this way. Number one is something I learned from Abraham Hicks. I don't know what, what it was pertained to. I think it had to do with drinking alcohol or something. I'm not recommending that, but what, what she said was that there is something to be said for escape. Sometimes it's good to to, to find a way to not be so immersed in an extremely negative situation. Now, I'm not suggesting you drink alcohol. What I'm gonna suggest is, I'm just gonna share what I used to do. I used to, when in the dark night of the soul, feel, again, disconnected, not hopeful, very just severed off from my spiritual center where I truly could not embody a sense of faith or knowingness that things would work out. So what I would do is I would, I would watch things or read things that help me remember my soul self. Like YouTube, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. Well, I watched a lot of like Abraham Hicks and Bashar and I had my own, it's not important who I watch, it's that find someone that helps remind you of who you really are underneath the temporary symptoms of the dark night of the soul. It's okay, if that's what you gotta do, if that gives you 20 minutes of release to watch a video, even though it's a sense of escape in some people's eyes, so be it. The dark night is tough, anyone in it knows that. So I recommend finding, having, having a, a few or a handful of go-to sources, whether it be a book or a blog article or an email or a YouTube video or something of that nature that you could flip on that helps kind of re-inspire you to keep going another day. Number two, I would do something completely random and out of my routine to kind of just shake me up, to shake me into a, a different state of being. Because our experience, and I'm just reading this in a, 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 about Tony Robbins, he goes on to explain that, he said that many times I have been awake wasting time journaling about problems. But he was journaling about problems from the state of being of one who's having a problem. He was having problems. And from that problematic state of being, he was trying to find solutions. But it doesn't work that way. He went on to say that all he needed to do in all those cases was change his what he calls his state, his state of being. What he would like to do is he, he's got a bunch of funny little things he does, but he does breathing techniques and exercise and, and, and he, you know, stuff like that. But the whole point is that if you're feeling in a problematic dark night of the soul sort of thing, you're not going to find actual answers that stick um, from that state of being. You must change your state. So I, I found that doing something random is helpful. I would just sometimes walk out of my house, even, even in the dead of winter, I'd bundle up and just walk some random path, go on a, a direction or something I, I normally don't walk, and just anything to kind of shake me out of this state of being that was negative, that only grows and magnifies the, the unpleasantness of that state of being, as well as the quote unquote reflections or problems that amount as a result of that. Get to the core. Number three, is to allow and accept and surrender to everything. 
That is always the best answer. What helped me really realize this was, I, I, I've been talking about it because it was so impactful, but I had an ayahuasca experience in Costa Rica and there was just one night in particular that I was so, it was such a powerful, uh, gripping experience that the only way I feel like I got through it without breaking mentally was by continuing to breathe and surrender. Because the way this ayahuasca works, which is it's sort of a, an accelerated version, in my opinion, of the awakening process, it brings to your attention issues in a very colorful and total, ex uh, in a total way, meaning mentally, emotionally, physically, and even like the pictures you see, it's this total experience highlighting something that's been hidden in you. And it's very hard to not initially resist it, just like the dark night of the soul. It's a process of you confronting your inner demons and there's a lot of resistance to it. Um, but with the ayahuasca, when you fought it even a little bit, it would just very quickly amplify the unpleasantness of it. And it, you just, you had to let go or lose your freaking mind. But I got really good at like seeing something I didn't like or it made me afraid and letting go and surrendering breathing, letting go and surrendering. And the moment you would even start to let go, the whole, the whole scene would change it, almost instantly. And there'd be a, oh, a relief and a lifting up and a feeling of liberation. So that's kind of a very accelerated way of going about this, but that's the same exact thing essentially happening with the spiritual awakening process. It's a gradual releasing of things that were hidden and because they were hidden, they're, they're hidden for a reason because we don't want to look at them or deal with them or feel them. So initially to confront and bump up against something of that nature, it's hard to not resist. But the resistance is, what's, what's up buddy? I, I'm shooting a video bro, okay? My little son. Um, anyways, the resistance is, it's, it's for one, it's futile, and two, it just makes matters worse. So when in doubt, breathe and surrender and let go. Okay, my friends, I hope this video served you in some way. I know I've been speaking to a lot of people going through a dark time and I wanted to, uh, sorry, I wanted to share some, some advice straight from the trenches, things that actually worked for me in a practical and noticeable way. I wanted to, to help you out and give those to you so you can have a, maybe a smoother transition. Okay, with that, I'm gonna close. Have an amazing day, my friends. I'll talk to you soon. Namaste.